I couldn't have ended my Japanese reading month without preparing something that makes me travel far, far away. And how could I have resisted the urge of cooking when reading Itogawa's best-selling novel, The Restaurant of Love Regained? This was the first Itogawa novel I read. You might remember the first video in the series on her Tsubaki stationery store that I read in French. But our first meeting was brought on by food, so it was only fitting to try my hand at some Japanese dishes in honor of our encounter. So let's start preparing the simplest, most satisfying entree salad while I take you through my reading impressions. A seaweed and cucumber salad with an easy Japanese dressing. The novel tells the story of a young woman that finds herself in need of returning to her mother's home after her boyfriend clears out her apartment, leaving her with no money and no possessions. So coming back home to seek refuge and figure out a game plan, she ends up opening a small boutique restaurant, focusing on local seasonal ingredients, but mostly on the personalities of her clients. This makes for a light coming-of-age novel, with accents of Japanese gastronomy, and as her other novel I read, a strong sense of mending broken family connections. The writing is airy and uncomplicated, so it might seem like a skim through Japanese chiclet, but I found some themes that were quite thought-provoking, like the philosophy of eating. Having the luxury of ordering sushi in any major western city, or maybe a ramen here and there, we often think that the whole Japanese cuisine is clear and simple. But the truth is that if we are not surrounded by connoisseurs, we rarely have the patience or curiosity to understand the carefully constructed Japanese meal. And in this respect, the novel has a very elegant approach to food, presented through the eyes of a young chef along with her trials and errors in finding balance, subtlety, and a holistic experience through food. I enjoyed the few detailed menus and their explanations, like this meal prepared for an old lady. At first I thought of selecting the best local ingredients to create something that was kind to the body, like fried shiitake mushrooms, sesame tofu, root vegetable soup, or steamed egg pudding. These are exactly the kind of things my grandmother had taught me to make. But after thinking about it a little more, I decided to scrap the idea start again. Then I came up with another notion, a meal designed to express the full range of human emotion. From delight to sorrow and from anger to pleasure. It would be a stimulating dinner encompassing an array of flavors, with desserts being soft and sweet and spicy dishes bursting with heat. A dinner of flavors I imagined she'd never tasted before. A dinner with the power to bring the dying cells of her body back to life. This is what I came up with.
actinidia liquor cocktail, bran pickled apples, oysters and sweet red sea bream carpaccio, sanjit and soup with a whole chicken brewed in shochu, botargo risotto with freshly harvested rice, lamb roast with wild mushroom garlic saute, yuzu sorbet, mascarpone cheese tiramisu with vanilla ice cream, dark espresso coffee. My first course in today's Japanese menu is a cold soba noodle soup that I've been wanting to make ever since reading Michel Maestro's food memoir, The Gastronomy of Marriage. And if you haven't seen my food memoir video, I'll leave the link here. Buckwheat noodles are very Japanese in my mind, but I never know how to bring them together in a dish. This is an easy solution for a hot summer lunch or just a lazy evening in front of the TV. The essential thing to have in your cupboard is the tsuyu base, a concentrated soup base made up of yummy ingredients like kelp, bonito flakes, soy sauce, some tangy and sweet mirin, and of course many secret ingredients that a chef doesn't divulge. Luckily, you can find it ready-made in any Asian supermarket or online. For the toppings, it's chef's choice, so I went with crispy seaweed, freshly chopped shiso leaves, and umeboshi, or salted pickled prunes. a drop or two of roasted sesame oil, and voila! Almost instant magic, and a guaranteed journey for your taste buds. The restaurant of Love Regained has been a joyful discovery of Japanese gastronomy as much as it has brought to my attention big cultural gaps between my own heritage and the Far East. Without spoilers, but with a mindful mention of a possible trigger for anyone dealing with loss or simply struggling with the idea of death. I wanted to mention the strong sense of a completely different approach to the subject. Of course, I already knew through the traditions of samurais that death doesn't have the same aura in Japanese culture as it does in my Judeo-Christian universe. But in this novel, I found some surprising scenes of serenity and acceptance when facing loss. I often notice the tragedy we tend to associate with something that is inevitable, and I struggle with society's expectations on the subject when I feel it is unnecessary and to some extent unhealthy. An idea that stuck with me after finishing the book, in a hopeful energy of life's eternal balance. My second course is an all-time favorite 
and the recent discovery all at once. A tuna tataki with miso glazed eggplant. Now tuna tataki is one of the easiest things you could make. The secret is to never overcook it and to make this brilliant sauce of course. I had a rather large tuna steak from the market so I made several strips out of it and grilled it in a very hot non-stick pan for 30 seconds on each side. For the sauce, a tiny amount of grated ginger, orange juice, soy sauce, mirin, and a drop of sesame oil, and you're done. For the eggplant, I slice them in half and bake them face down for about 30 minutes. Meanwhile, I mixed some miso paste with water, mirin, soy sauce and a little agave syrup. Then a splash of sesame oil I love and reduced it on low heat until it was silky and thick. Then glazed my eggplants and baked them for a few more minutes before finishing with some fresh chives, under close surveillance, of course. It was a new and creative way of cooking eggplants, a new classic in my cookbook. All of the recipes are on my website, and you'll find the link below. As for the dessert of my Japanese menu, I cheated and went for the store-bought Sakura Mochi, complete with the pickled cherry leaf on top. A sticky and subtle flavored delight to end the journey in a meal. My Japanese April ends here. Do have a look at my previous reviews. I've brought them all together in a Japanese inspiration playlist, linked down below. This was a spontaneous project that brought immense joy to my month of April and a little later on, of course. Living proof that you can transform your everyday life just by finding a project that awakens your enthusiasm. All the rest will follow. Until next time, enjoy your reading and your ritual.